Hi there, it's Karen here from Turquoise Treasures. Welcome back to my channel and as you can see we're going to be doing another video um, making some ephemera for the boho journal. But today, I'm sorry I'm just picking off some, <laughs> some bits of loose threads that seem to have escaped from some of my fabrics. Um, you'll have to finish that later. So yes, today we're going to do a bit of mixed media because um, so it's rather a different thing for me because I don't do it very often but it's something I keep wanting to do. Um, I'm just not very brave with it, but I, um, I've had this idea of, of something I wanted to do for a while, um, and it's going to be, oh, it's upside down. Oh, didn't even notice I'd got it upside down. Should have done, shouldn't I? Okay, well, I'll, I'll show you these for a start. Uh, these are the um, tags and journal cards we made in the last video, which have now all been sewn around. So, so, and it doesn't have to make a difference. I, I really think it makes such a difference to sew around some of these, especially the bigger ones. I think it really helps to make them, give them that finished look. So there's that one, and then there's that one, and it just finishes them off lovely. And then there's this one. Um, and I also did the, um, put in the pockets in the middle. And I did add a little extra something here because I just felt it needed something to go up. Um, and also because I've got the, the gold um, trim here, I just wanted to bring it over here as well. So I've got things going between the two. Um, and then I've sewn around these and stuck them in and I really like how they look now. But for today, I want to make something to go, and I did say that I had an idea for it, to go in here. That's some other bits that I want, might use to decorate. Um, but yeah, I want to get, put something in here, um, and instead of just using up my, the rest, the last of my master board, which I, I had left over, random piece of knitting, um, I thought I'd do something different, just because I felt like it, really. Um, so I put that to one side, and I'm going to base it on this thing here that I made. I think it's that way up. Um, I don't think I've shown you this before. This is on um, watercolour paper so it's really thick it's like really thick card um, and it's from a pad and I did this when I was recuperating from my operation and I was still in my sling but I wanted to have a bit of a play I was getting very frustrated was sitting looking in my room um, at all the things that I couldn't play with so I thought well I'm gonna have a go so what I did was I got these out. I'd never used them before and I wanted to try them well you know just while I had nothing better to do and I just thought I'd play with them and so all of the colours that I've got, I've just got this one pack, they're Tim Holtz Distress Crayons. Um, and they're water, um, water based. So all I did was I scribbled all the different colours, I don't know if you can see. Um, and then used some uh, wet wipe to, to smudge it all around and make it all merge into one. So you can see all the colours are in there, but then I covered it with some um, sewing pattern um, paper, you know, the uh, the brown see-through paper that you get from sewing patterns and you could see all the different bits of sewing pattern um, on the paper so I went over it just to knock it back a bit because the colours were really bright um, and then I think the next thing I did was I, I stamped all over it with a variety of stamps um, I've got clocks here and some script and all sorts of things um, so it's kind of all merging in with the stamping and the um, some of the writing from the sewing pattern um, uh, it's sort of merging in so it's all got that all over look and then I did some now I did all these things it took me days because I could only do a little bit at a time because it was really difficult having my arm in a sling doing it all one-handed and it made me up uh, you know it made everything a little bit uncomfortable so I had to do it a little bit at a time which is why I didn't do it on camera um, and then I put some of those little stickers that I've got all over it as well just as little finishing touches here and there um, and I love how it looks and I've not wanted to use it really and I haven't had the opportunity to do anything with it um, but I am going to make something um, based on this idea but I'm not going to use this itself I, I think I'm holding it a little bit but just so that it gives me a bit of inspiration so I should put that to one side but you can see the, um, where I'm going with my bit of um, mixed media today and I'm not going to use all the colours. Um, needless to say, I'm going to pick out the colours that go with the journal, which is going to be this one and this one. And I 
don't know if I've used these on camera before. I don't think I have, but I could be wrong. When I was doing the masterboard, I might have done some. Um, yeah, Lizzie, Lizzie loved playing with these, as you can imagine. And I've just got a smaller piece, or a couple of small pieces, of the um, watercolour paper. It's really, really thick, so you can do pretty well anything you like on it. So I have some ideas of things I want to do, but this is what I'm going to start um, start with. And I've got my wet wipes up the ready, and I'm ho I haven't done this for ages, so I'm hoping it's still I can still remember what to do. I mean, I just was making it up last time, but sometimes you do things the first time, and it goes really well. And then when you try to do it again, it doesn't always go quite so well. So fingers crossed, we're going to just have a bit of a scribble, really. And it's really dark when you first scribble it on and then you get your wet wipe and you just smudge it. I mean you can do it with uh, go on it with water and a paintbrush I think and just smudging it so it really softens the colour a lot. Okay, so that's that. Just make sure I've got it thoroughly smudged. And you've got all that lovely colour, which um, you can save for another project, can't we? Um, right, and then I'm just going to fill in the gaps with this one. I can get this one to wind up because my hands are a bit wet now and it's quite difficult to wind it up. I just quite, um just get a kitchen towel I think. Let's see if I can get a bit of grip. I have found these a little bit stiff, but yeah, it's coming up now. You don't need a lot, just wind it up enough. So you can just do a little bit of Okay. Hopefully that will be enough. Let's put that top on. It's quite a vibrant colour, this orange. I'll tell you what the colours are in a second. Because obviously they're, they're Tim Holtz colours, so they match all the all the distress inks and distress oxides as well. There we are. Just merging them in together. do something I might do another one with the other piece of card but I just want to start with this one and maybe I'll have another go and end up with two different ones and then I can choose or use them both. Um, I was just going to tell you what colours these were. This one's broken china and this one is carved pumpkin so it's a really bright orange. And this set I don't know whether it's got a name this set. It's got number six on it so it could be or is it number eight? I think this might be set number six. I ordered it from Art from the Heart. So the other colours in this set, it seems to be quite an eclectic mix really. Um, a Victorian velvet, worn lipstick, uh, mowed lawn, and blueprint, blueprint sketch. I've never even heard of that one. That's a new one on me, blueprint sketch, but that's what that colour is. So let's just pop these back in here. They're quite fun to play with, and I mean, that I found that's the the best way for me to use it is to do it with the uh, with the wet wipe. But I'm sure there are way, plenty more ways of using these. Just probably just watch Tim Holtz video. Um, let's see, is it dry? So it dries pretty quick as well, doing it that way as well. You don't make it all wet with water. Then I thought, um, I am wondering whether to spray it a little bit with some coffee. Although I don't really want it to be knocked back too much, but I might just do a few little squirts with some coffee. 
just got it in a little bottle hoping it will work sometimes it's a bit temperamental okay just got a little bit may not even show I don't know right now the next thing will definitely show so I pulled out some stencils so I like this one I've got I've gone with my dilution stencils uh, for this for this project I have got a number of Tim Holtz stencils but I fancied using the dilutions ones because I've got quite a few and I thought I'd like to use them right I really only want a little bit in the corner and I'm just trying to decide what colour to go with so I've got Lindy Stamp Gang Starburst Spray um, in a Tiffany Lou Blue but it's got a little bit of a sparkle in it which I'm hoping will show up but it's a lovely colour so let's try it dripped a little bit. You can see I've been I've been practicing, I've been trying out some of my sprays this morning to make sure they worked and my fingers I've washed them several times and they're still really horrible so I dare say by the end of this video my fingers will be really really colourful. Right. Whoops. Slippage. Stay still. I'm not really good at doing this without leaning on the paper. I have to try and do it like that. Whoops. Oh dear. Okay. Not really getting quite the look I want yet. I'm thinking, do I need to stick it down? Just have to try and get an angle. Because I can't do this one-handed, unfortunately. Just not, just not strong enough. So I have to do it with two hands and it's quite difficult to get a get a purchase. There we go. I'll move it a little closer to me. I might get a better coverage. Let's see what we've got. Ooh. Let's just wipe off the excess. Right, let's have a look. Well, it's not fabulous, but you can see the pattern on the orange. So I'm just wondering whether to try a little bit more. Let's just blot this blob here where I dripped it. There we are, that's better. And Maybe do a little bit over this side. It's not showing up, it's only showing up on the orange anyway, which is what I kind of wanted. Okay, let's see what we've got. It did shift a little bit, but it's not too bad. Wipe the nozzle. Okay. It's just so much mopping up to do after each time you spray. See if I want anything on the blue. Maybe I'll go with a different stencil and a different spray. I'm going to try and do something up in this corner here. I've got this stencil. So again, it's a dilution stencil. Um, so the first one, hang on, what's the... This first one is called... Is it on the back? Court Jester. It's the small version of the Court Jester. So they do a 12 by 12 version um, and the small version, which is something like six by eight, I think. So that was the, um, the diamondy pattern, Court Jester. And then the other one is called Otis Orb, Otis's Orbs. Otis is um, Diane Reevely's grandson. 
So she names a lot of her stencils after her grandchildren. So this is Otis's orbs. <laughs> Bit of a mouthful. Right, and this one I've got a um, Heidi Swap Colour Shine in a peach. So we'll see how that comes out on the blue. I'm just going to have to pull it towards me a little bit to get a bit of a purchase. I don't want to get the hard edge, so I'm just taking off the side of the step of the paper a little bit. Let's see what we get with this one. It says peach, but it's actually quite a bright colour. Okay, I think we're gonna have reasonable coverage on that. Yes. Okay, and once more, I'll just move this out of harm's way. Well, I just quickly clear up a little bit. That's what we got. So we've got a bit of that. Of course, now I want to put a bit of that in the in the other two blue bits, don't I? So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm thinking I might do a bit of that in here. This one is actually a little bit easier to spray than the other one. The way I'm getting some blobby bits, but I'll just I think I'll just dab those with my kitchen towel. Okay. And let's move up straight on to this one. This has actually got a little shine in it too. That's why it's called Colour Shine. And actually it really does pick up a bit of shine, so it's rather nice. Okay, liking that so far. And I like the colours, it all goes nicely with the colours in the journal. So that's all good. Now, um, the next thing I want to do is to do some stamping as you might expect okay um that is nearly dry but i've realized while this is drying i could be getting on with the other piece couldn't i because i want to do both pieces um do them slightly different so that i then can choose which one i prefer let's just get on my chair properly um so well, let's get where did i put those little crayon thingies um i've lost them now oh i put them away didn't i Put them back in the packet. So I get them out again and do the next one a bit differently. So I think I'll perhaps do this, do a bit more of the orangey colour first. That's it, just wind that up a little bit so I can get, get in there. So I'll do a bit of that and a bit of that. Oops, running out of running out of colour, and a bit of that. Let's see how that looks. And then 
Or this one. It's quite a fun technique. I suppose you could do this on, on anything really, but it needs to be I suppose it needs to be fairly robust cardstock or paper. So that you can do the rubbing without um without the paper kind of um rubbing up, if you see what I mean. It's um Normal paper wouldn't wouldn't take to this technique very well at all, I don't think. I think actually I need a little bit more of the blue. I think it's just a little bit, a bit too washed out for me. Just just add a little extra, a little extra depth to the colour. The orange is so very vibrant. And we are going to do some some sprays as well. Oops, and this one as well. Okay, so that's the start. Um, now for this one, I think I've got. I've got quite a lot of uh, dilution sprays, and some of them that are they're very very um, dense in colour. So I took some of them and I put them in one of these bottles and added water. So I did a bit of, I probably did a, a I don't know, um, two to three. I don't know what the proportions were. I just put some of the um, some of the paint in and then added water. And actually, I prefer this colour to the original vibrant turquoise. I um, playing around with it earlier and it, that is just really dark it's almost a teal it's so dark whereas this one is really a lovely color so that's the color I want to spray with um, what am I going to use for this one I've got this stencil which is quite a nice one I might do a bit of that this is a um, this isn't dilutions this is a Dina Wakely stencil I haven't got I think it's the only one of hers I have but I do quite like it so I'm going to try that See how that comes out on here. Kind of just doing a bit all over really. See how that looks. Watch out, I need to, should have wiped the nozzle as well. These ones can be a bit prone to clogging as well. Well, they all can be a bit prone to clogging. Let's see what we've got here. Okay, so you're not really getting the colour that much, but I think it does. Just makes it a bit more interesting. Okay. Okay, I quite like that. I don't think I'm going to do any other st um, stencils, any other sprays on that, because I, it went all over. I've just got to clean this up, of course. In fact, before I do any stamping, my next, my next layer. Um, I want to do some gold splatters. Now, where have I put it? There it is. Actually, it's a good thing I turned the camera off because this has got itself thoroughly. I think I've only used it once before, but it got itself really dried, and I had an awful job getting the lid off. So I had to go and soak it in some hot water and get the pliers out, and eventually I got the top off. So I was doing that while I was off camera. So I'm just going to, this is a watercolour paint I got from Amazon. This is one that, um, I'd never heard of it before, but it's one that Barbara at 49 Dragonflies uses all the time. Although I think she uses a different, a darker gold than this one. She's, I can't remember what colour is this. This is light gold and I think she uses a dark gold. But I prefer a light gold. There we go. Is it coming out? Okay. Not quite sure how this is going to work. I've never used my splatter brush before. It's pristine. So this is it's all new territory. But sometimes it's fun to do something different. So right. Get this. Oh, it's lovely. It's all soft. <laughs> 
Um, and I was going to just spray some water onto the paint. I can do some splattering. Oops. Helps if it actually sprays at the um, at the paint and not all over the place. Let's see if this works. Maybe I need it to be a little wetter. Not a good spray of this. Yeah, that's better. Got a little bit more out. Okay. Well, I've got something I can jab it with. That's better. A few spots. Ooh, I think I'm getting more on me than on the paper. <laughs> I think it's spraying up not down. Is that working? Well, there's, a, there's a few bits. This is clearly not my forte. Um, I think some more water and some more paint. So I can get some to go actually on the card and not on my face. Uh, where to put it? Honestly, the number of times I put things down and I can't remember what I've done with them. It's ridiculous. Another little squirt. Okay, let's try that. Oh, that's better. Some nice sort of gold splattering now. Okay. Let's see. I'd like it have a bit more, maybe. Well, I need a nice big blob of the gold. I think I'm being a bit tentative. There we go. Now I'm going to wipe it first because I don't want the same to happen next time I try to open it. And a squirt of water. Okay, let's go for it. We have too much now. Oop. Yeah. Now we're cooking. Oops, I think you've probably gone off camera there, sorry about that. So I just wipe. Sorry, it was a bit, a bit high up there. I don't know if you could see that or not. But it is going quite well now. Okay, so I think I'll leave that to dry for a minute. Up there. Let's try it on this one. Because this clearly needs a bit of extra something. Just getting the consistency right, I think. And being really bold. So we're not just got spots, we've got, I don't know, swishes and all sorts going on. There we are. And it's going everywhere, of course. But never mind. So that's why we've got the mats down for the layers. Okay, now this is definitely going to have to have to dry, and I don't really, not sure I want to put the the heat gun on it. Um, oh, yeah, 
Ooh, lovely. Um, because I think I'd like it to dry where it is. If I stop putting the heat gun on, it'll start to spread. Maybe I'll try that on one of them. This one's got a nice lot of splatters. I might try and put in a few more. Now that I've really got the hang of it on this one. to think what my face looks like because <laughs> I keep feeling the splatters on my face. Richard comes home from work tonight and he'll say what on earth have you been doing? There we go. I think that will do. So I think I need to clear myself up and um, wait for those to dry and then I'll be back. I think I might turn the mat over and get the gold on this backing paper so that I can actually, so I don't waste it. Right, these two are dry now. Um, I don't know how well you can see. Can you see the gold on there? I think this one's just a touch more subtle. If, it's, if subtle is a word you can actually use to either of these, this one definitely is not subtle at all. It's got lots of gold on it and it's a very bright orange. Um, so now I'm going to do some stamping on them. And I think I'm going to start with this one. I think this is my favourite. Um, and I've got a variety of background stamps and possibly um, stamping for to give it more of a, a focal point if I'm going to do that or I don't know if I'm going to stick a focal point on or not yet but this one is a 49 and market stamp and it's really good because you've got a variety of different backgrounds and I really like this one to start things off this is um, it's like a crackle, gla crackle glaze I wonder if I can, yeah, I think I'll just, I don't think I'll stick it onto a block. So just put some black archival on, we'll just go around, around the page, first of all, with a bit of this. one Let's see how it takes to this paper because I don't think I've I think I did use it on that big one I did so I think it'll be okay on here So what I've got, and the next one I'm going to use is this one it's called Old Letter. It's basically quite a large scripty stamp. Over here. So let's try using that. I use this one quite a lot too. Wondering what else I could put on here. I have got this, this is a Kaiser Craft stamp with lots of different it's got butterflies on it, a few feathers, maybe I'll put a few feathers on. Just to make just for something a bit different. I don't think I've ever used these these feather ones. I've used the butterflies. Maybe we'll just have a few feathers, shall we? Um, this one I think does need a little block. Okay, and I think um, I will do, try these with the sepia ink. Don't know how that will come out, but I'm just just going to try that. Something different. Don't know how juicy this one is anymore. It was very juicy when I first got it. 
Let's just see, shall we? If it's going to show up. Oh yeah. Subtle. But it is there. Um... Okay, some of them are showing up really well and others only a, more of a suggestion really. But I quite like that. I think I might just leave it at that for now until I've cut it to shape and then we'll see about a possible um, focal point. Don't know what that will be at the moment. But let's, let's move on and do the other one. Okay. I oh, don't know how much you can see there, but I quite like that how that's turning out. So now this one, and I know I want to use this honeycomb, honeycomb stamp. Okay, so I think that will, that's a good start. Now, what else can I put on here? So I've done the, the script. I have got this rather nice one here, which is another one of the Prima ones. I used the other two little ones. I bought three little ones all at the same time a while ago. And this one I didn't use. This one's called Love Potion. Mm -hmm. So let's try a bit of Love Potion, shall we? I'm just going to leave it on its backing and see how that comes out. I want, I'm feeling I'd like some music, which I haven't brought out, but I can quickly go and get. It's another Kaiser Craft stamp. They did some nice stamps, Kaiser Craft. They, they come out quite well. Uh, now that's the script one, and I've got the sheet music one. I'm going to put a bit of sheet music, I think, in the sepia. So let's see. Um, let's go back into the book. Um, I'm going to find my envelope again. Where is he? Here he is. So first of all, let's see if the height is right. I think the height might be okay. It makes life a bit easier. So I'm just going to pop it in. And I don't know if I, I think I may, I don't think I showed you. I put a bit of the, um, well it's not woolly washi tape, it's the Tim Holtz linen tape around the edge because it was getting a bit raggedy and I thought it needed a bit of protection. So I'll put that on. Okay, so let's mark it where I need to cut it. So I need to cut it about there. Is that the right one? So I should have should have checked which one looks better, shouldn't I? This one's just a little bit on the just a bit brighter. 
I like it as well, but I think I'll go with the, I think I'll go with the other one. See how it looks when it's been cut down. Whether it needs anything else to finish it. Nice tag, little narrow tag, but that'd be quite handy. Right, so let's see how that looks. I will round the corners, maybe I should do that first. And I will probably, well, I think I will definitely sew around it as well. Finish it off. Only because I really like how that looks, but none of these things actually need to be sewn around. Uh, right. So let's see how it looks here and make a decision about whether we need a focal point. I feel like it probably does. There we go. That goes in there rather nicely. Okay, and I'm going to I'm going to find my. I'm going to do a little. I'm going to do a gale, and I'm going to do an ink and think. I can reach my dobber, which is oh, right at the back of my desk. Okay. See if any of these would be the right sort of size. Let's have a look at these ones. So these are ones I'm wondering about this one actually. Hmm, let's cut her out or them them out. Don't know if I've used this one or not. How that how this looks. I think I'm gonna take away this paper. It's a bit distracting now that I've finished doing all the all the paintwork, so I'll be right back. I just want to clear this away and we'll go back to using my mat. Okay, so um I really quite like that on there. Um I have just inked around it just to take away the whiteness of the edge. But I think it needs something, a little something behind it. I've brought, pulled out a few options and I'm not quite sure which is going to work best. I've got some coffee dyed cheesecloth here, which may work okay. Let's try a little bit of that. I'm just going to cut a piece off because it's really hard to tell when you've got a whole long piece. because you get some nice frayed edges with this stuff which I quite like but I don't want to cover too much I just want to have it poking out the sides a little bit do I like that enough mm. not sure I've also dived in my big box of laces 
some bits I haven't used before. The one that when I say laces, they're they're things that I bought from the charity shop, sort of um, lacy tops that I cut up. And this is a piece of one of them which I've never used. But it's got some really nice. It's got some gorgeous flowers which you can cut out, but also it's got this. This was more the top of the top half of the of the top. And I'm wondering if maybe that would look quite nice. Just poking out a little bit. I was a bit worried it might be a bit thick, but I don't think it's too bad. And it doesn't cover up as much, too much of the background. So I might just trim that down a bit, because I think I quite like that. Let's see how it looks. It's nice and easy to, because it's got straight lines, you can end up not having a nice straight edge, which is quite handy. And you can just have one of each of the little, whatever they are, <laughs> poking out all around. A nice bit of an even, an even surround. Whoops. I could almost cut that middle piece out actually. I wonder if that would make sense and just have this as a little frame. That work. Maybe that would be the best thing to do, then it would be less bulky. Okay, <laughs> I think that's what I'm going to do. Then I think I'm just going to do a line of this all around the outside. Half the time. I might just raise it up a little bit. There's a slightly bigger gap at the bottom. sure how I lost quite as much of the um, of where that bit went but I can just cut another strip oh there's three more here okay stick another a few on there I need these little bits of trimming I think Bit. 
How many do I need? Probably no more than two. Let's see. Yep. To complete the circuit. Okay. Need to pull this out a little bit because the frame is not a little bit off. The makes the picture look a bit off center, doesn't it? And some of these need a bit of a trim. Yes, I might have made life a bit difficult for myself with this. These just need a re-glue. Okay, I think that's as good as it's going to get. It looks quite sweet, and I'm wondering whether one of these flowers I could put one of those. I don't know, it might be too much. Let's just try. too much. Maybe I took it over to the side a bit and then trim that off. I'd rather like that. I'm hoping it's not going to be too much because I want to stick it on there anyway. Right, did my usual battle with the um, fabric tack so you didn't need to watch me doing that. Right, I just thought I'd just put that on there. It actually goes down quite nice and flat, so I think it's okay. I'll just trim these bits off. And then we'll put it in the book and we'll call that done. see how that looks and I think I will still sew around it as well uh, where'd I put the book oh, hiding okay and here it is and let's see how that goes in oh, yeah It goes in quite nicely. So there it is. That was today's project. <coughs> that was really, really a lot of fun to do. Um, I still got to come up with something to finish this one off with. I haven't quite decided. I don't even know where it's going to go, but I'm sure I'll find a spot for it. So yeah, thank you very much for joining me for this fun mixed media video. Well, it was fun for me. I don't know if it was fun for you. And please join me again soon. Bye for now.